a real honor to be able to, to talk you through what we're doing and kind of the story behind it. Um, five years ago, I developed insomnia, which without doubt was one of the worst experiences of my life. And I'm lucky in that I studied experimental psychology at university, so I know that there are very effective non-drug ways of overcoming problems like poor sleep, uh, predominant of which is cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT. So I went to my doctor, sort of smugly pronounced my self-diagnosis, primary chronic insomnia, uh, which uh, obviously goes down well, generally, with doctors. And, uh, and uh, I asked for my course of CBT, and he gave me sleeping pills. And whatever I did, that's all I could get was pills. So eventually, out of desperation, I got my hands on a book, a self-help book written by a guy called Professor Colin Espy, who at that time was at the University of Glasgow. And it's basically a self-administered CBT course. So you do a chapter a week. You know, it's quite a manual process. You've got to photocopy out sleep diaries, you know, do maths. You know, it's quite a sort of arduous process. Uh, but in six weeks, I was totally better. And you know, obviously, from a personal perspective, this was an incredible experience. Um, but what it also did was open my eyes to what is, quite frankly, an insane situation. Billions of people worldwide are suffering from problems for which we have proven behavioral solutions. So sleep alone is enormous. 38% of people at any one time are suffering from, from at least one insomnia symptom. About a quarter of those are chronic. And you know, this is not a lifestyle issue. This is something which has a fundamental effect on pretty much every aspect of physical and mental well-being. Um, almost none of those people, like me, can access anything but drugs or dry self-help materials. And that same story is true in a whole range of other verticals, from anxiety, depression, smoking cessation. We have decades of evidence around the efficacy of behavioral interventions in these conditions and these problems. Um, and so my question that I asked uh, very simply was, can we use technology to deliver evidence-based behavioral medicine to people in a way that is you know, accessible and affordable and scalable uh, and everything that digital gives you by default, um, but, it, but most importantly, in a way that people will actually do? And you know, this clearly is the main issue with behavioral medicine, delivered in a protocol-based, like digital way, is producing it an experience that people will actually put into practice and that fits in with their daily lives. So having had this epiphany, I then rang up Professor Colin Espy, who'd written the book, uh, you know, got dressed up, put on a tie, went up to Glasgow, uh, and convinced him to join me. So he, Colin is now my co-founder. He is uh, one of the leading experts in behavioral sleep science. He's now at the University of Oxford. Uh, and together, we built our first product, which is Sleepio. And as the name suggests, it is a digital sleep improvement program. Uh, you access it via web and mobile, and it's fully automated. So there's no clinicians or you know, real people in the background deciding what you get. But it's very, very highly tailored to each individual's needs and goals. And like I say, most importantly, uh, it's designed to not feel like medicine. So the whole program is presented by your virtual animated sleep expert, the prof, and his narcoleptic dog, Pavlov. And he takes you through this very tailored program. And you check in with him once a week, and he'll greet you by name. Oh, good to see you again, Peter. You know, let's have a look at your sleep diary for this week. You know, not such a good week, you know, but hang in there. You know, early days, early days. And he takes you through tailored cognitive and behavioral techniques. Uh, and then between times, he's always there for you. So if you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't sleep, uh, you get sleepy on your phone, uh, he appears in his dressing gown. He says, oh, oh, Peter, you know, what seems to be the problem? You know, I can't sleep, eh? Get you out of bed, have a look at your relaxation plan. And he unlocks your relaxation plan, gives you audio to get you back to sleep again, and then in the morning, an hour after you specifically normally get out of bed, he'll send you a text message, just saying, Peter, so sorry you woke up last night. It happens to the best of us. You're filling your diary while it's still fresh in your mind. So that narrative over multiple channels, that attempt to mimic you know, the bits that work from what is you know, up until now the gold standard of face-to-face -face therapy is a really, really core hypothesis in what we're doing, which is that if we can humanize the experience, you know, even like borrow 20% of what people really like about a face-to-face -face interaction, Tamagotchi style, then there's potentially huge rewards there in terms of levers that we can pull to get people to stick with the program and put this stuff into practice. So this is all great, but largely irrelevant if it doesn't work. Uh, so we conducted the world's first placebo-controlled randomized control trial. And 
Uh, this uh, was incredibly difficult to do uh, with a talking therapy intervention. We built a complete fake system, which we then threw away afterwards, which is convincing nonsense. Uh, but it gave us incredibly resilient clinical data. And the results, uh, thankfully, show that it's incredibly effective. So comparable in effect to face-to-face -to -face therapy, uh, even people who had had poor sleep for over 10 years, uh, within a matter of weeks, on average, were falling asleep over 50% faster, staying asleep over 60% longer through the night, and all of their daytime measures from en you know, energy, concentration, were up by over 50%. And you know, fantastic response to the research, publications from The Lancet uh, through to Nature, um, you know, really giving it great plaudits for the quality of the research that we conducted. So uh, since we published the, the study, we've been focused on getting CPO out there to the people who need it. And you know, that's through partnering with organizations such as Bupa. Um, but also, we were one of Jawbone's uh, 10 API launch partners for their up uh, wristband, tracking wristband. And we're integrated with a, a wide range of different tracking devices. And you know, on a practical level, these devices provide a really elegantly combined experience. So we can pull in automatically track sleep data and that makes the whole uh, experience even lower friction and easier for people to use. Um, so that's sleep and Sleepio, and really, that is just the beginning. So you know, what devices such as Jawbone indicate is that they're on the cusp of a revolution in healthcare. And you know, they're kind of early versions and kind of our first stabs at, at this, but you know, I believe that one way or another, uh, tracking our health and wellness data is going to become a normal part of everyday life. And what that data does, excitedly, is give us the opportunity to build types of intervention that we've never before in human history had the opportunity uh, to even consider. So interventions that are tailored not just to uh, a person's profile, you know, their traits-based uh, characteristics, but delivering tailored, laser-guided help to their needs on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. And you know, that represents nothing less than tipping behavioral science on its head, uh, which for decades and decades has been constrained by the constraints of the delivery mechanism, which is face-to-face -face interventions uh, you know, once a week or so and not really having any idea what you're doing between times. So you know, building those interventions, this new type of evidence-based, super personalized, reactive uh, behavioral interventions is what we're now engaged with at Big Health. Um, and if we succeed in doing so, the implications are enormous. You know, we should be able to smash existing, target, existing standards of adherence and clinical outcomes. Um, you know, we have an opportunity to build companies of a size and scale that for the first time, without recourse to drugs, challenge Big Pharma. And most importantly, for the first time ever, we can deliver evidence-based behavioral medicine to the millions of people around the world who would benefit from accessing it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. One question. Uh, yep. This can vary. I know startups like focus and they should focus on the product, but this can be very easily applied to all sorts of behavioral issues. Right? Completely. And I think that the, the sort of incredibly exciting and motivating thing is that there are these huge areas, you know, 60% of the world's you know, disease burden is non-communicable diseases, and a huge proportion of those can be directly and like clinically affected with behavioral interventions. And, you know, the big health banner under which yeah. Sleepio is the first product is really a vehicle for us to start exploring that and investigating it. And I think that, you know, one of the most exciting things is that we no longer have to adhere to these classical um, uh, boxes that we put people in, syndromatic boxes, you know, uh, sleep problems themselves have huge comorbidities. 80% yeah. of people with depression have sleep problems. You know, we're a mix of these different issues and we can try and build something that addresses a whole load of them at the same time. I'll download the app because I need some help. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>